In this example of space claim, we'll take a look at how to build a solid body on top of an STL file. Now maybe the best way to start this would be to go into a sketch right around the top and you'll notice what happens is space claim attempts to turn all those intersections of facets into usable curves. So after a copy and paste operation, I've got curves everywhere that I could use. Going into that pull tool, the curves turn into surfaces, and now I've got a solid. The problem with this solid, you'll notice, is anywhere where there's supposed to be a cylinder, it's broken up into small planar faces. That's the approximation that Space Claim did uh, for those facets. After all, facets are just small triangular segments. Now, let's do an undo operation. And this is really the perfect time to use Space Claim's curve fitting tools. If I go back into that sketch that created this, anywhere where there were line segments that made up that cylinder, Space Claim with one click of a button will turn that into a cylinder or a couple cylinders. Now let's do that one more time there and create one complete arc. Now when I go into that pull tool to create geometry, I'm creating smooth surfaces everywhere and they're not faceted at all. Maybe one more modification I want to do is ensure that the two cylindrical faces are actually uh, concentric where the axes line up. And in fact, they're not. This tells me that they have almost a two thousandths gap between them, or a mismatch between them. So how do I align those up? Well, I have to first decide which one's going to be the master and which is the slave. We'll decide that the center one needs to stay put. And it's Space Claim's move tool that quickly allows me uh, to get those into position and get the two surfaces concentric with each other. So it's very simple to do. Maybe the last two, uh, the ones on the right, are not quite concentric or actually have the same height in the y direction. Well, that's simple to do. If I grab all those faces, make sure my move tool is on that axis, and say, let's move it in a certain direction, in a y direction, to ensure that they do line up. And so now all of those bodies, all those faces are concentric, and these two axes should have the same height in that y direction. So there you have it. In a couple button clicks I'm able to recreate just a part of this model after a few more minutes using the same tools you could do the entire body. One last thing to mention, I never really dictated the height of this thing. I pulled it to an arbitrary distance, but certainly at any time I could snap directly up to a facet. And I could do that multiple times all over the body to achieve the precision that I want. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching.